All right, I'm going to start over. <laughs> Am I going, Kelly? Let's yes, go wide. Let me introduce you first to our producer, uh, Kelly Miracle. My name is Luke Taft. Uh, I am co-founder along with Susan Miracle of the Art Hall Inc. We're a nonprofit 501c3 arts organization. Uh, we do classes for kids. We do classes for adults. We do paint parties. Uh, we promote the arts in general. Uh, and we are starting off our live interactive uh, paint classes, live streaming. So this is our first test run. We're trying to work out quirks here, so bear with us. Let us know if the volume is um, messed up or you can't hear us. I think this is the second time I, maybe I repeated my, I know I repeated myself. I don't know if you could hear me the first time or not, so. I'm pretty sure they can because well, using the. Okay. Anyway, that's the troubles that we're trying to work out here, and so that's why, that's why we're doing this. Um, anyway. Um, Kelly, good. okay, volume's good. Someone said volume's good. All right, Kelly is here to not only uh, control the camera and um, pan and zoom, but she'll be reading questions that you send in, uh, and I can answer them live as we stream. And uh, anyway. I guess we should get started. Um, um, what? Six people. Six people, cool. All right. Well, like I said, we're painting a desert scene. And uh, instead of mountains, I saw some with mountains in the background when I was looking for ideas to photographs. But I decided to go with what they call a... Now, don't giggle too hard. It's actually called a butte. And it's different than a mountain in a specific way. A mountain pops up out of the ground. Buttes look a little bit different because they're left behind. So the ground used to be here, right? There's the surface. And what happens with a butte is the water erodes away the ground one side erodes away the ground on the other side and leaves, there's a hard spot that doesn't get eroded away. And it usually has kind of a shape like this. Anyway, that's a butte. And so we're gonna put that in our painting. We're also gonna put a cactus in our painting. We're gonna go with the old school, kind of the cowboy looking cactus. You know, something like that. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to put a cowboy hat on it, Kelly. Maybe I will. We'll see. Anyway, let me start with the colors we'll be using. Uh, we are going to use white. And I'll give you an idea about how much we need here. I always like to air with less color. Less paint at first. I can always add more. That way I'm not wasting it. Um, black. I almost always use white and black. Uh, orange. I could make orange from red and yellow, but I'm going to use pre-mixed orange. Yeah, let's get a little bit more. We're going to have a nice, exciting orange sky. All right. We need some yellow. This is a student grade acrylic paint, by the way. It's uh, very affordable and it works great and makes beautiful paintings. All right, so yellow, orange, black, white. Let's put some blue in for our sky. And what else do we need? Am I missing something? Oh, red. Let's put some red in. We don't need that much red. Red goes a long ways. Black goes a long ways. It's 
good to remember red and black goes a long ways. All right, get this stuff out of my way. All right, the other thing I'll need, I'm gonna do this whole painting with one brush. I like to use flat brushes. To me, I, they're more versatile. I can paint this way and get a wide stroke. I can rotate it this way and get a very skinny stroke. So I have also a container of water. Uh, you want to put enough water in your container so it's heavy enough that you don't bump the table and it spills. You also don't want to put it too close to the edge. Just try to avoid making a mess, you know, of course. And I have a paint towel. You can use a paper towel. You can use a, Shirts, a an old shirt. What else can you use? Oh, your dog. Your yeah, I would. All right. Please do not use your dog or your cat. But uh, anyway, you get the idea. Just some old piece of cloth you can use. And all we're doing is we're going to be drying our brush with this towel. So I'm starting with a dry brush because I don't want to dilute my colors. Uh, sometimes I like to use a wet brush because the colors go on faster and you get kind of a see-through effect. But for this, I'm going to go full blast on the colors. Uh, sound good? Are you ready to start, Kelly? Yeah, I think we're ready to start. All right. So. Um, are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. Isn't they ready? All right. We're going to start with the sky. Uh, some, I, I usually paint the background on first uh, for a landscape. There's some, some cases where I don't, uh, but usually I do. Uh, it's a lot easier to put the background in first because uh, then you don't have to go filling in little details behind little details with background. Anyway, I'm going to get a nice amount of blue on my brush. And I'm going to use it so I get a a, a wide stroke so I'm holding it so the wide wideness of the brush is going against the canvas and I'm using long smooth strokes one side of the brush the other side of the brush back and forth and you'll see that as it starts to run out you can kind of smear what paint you have on the canvas a little bit uh, and get better coverage. So let's go down a little bit further. I, I need some more blue. Go ahead and reload when you start to run out. It's fine. There we go. We want, don't want to go too far down because we want that exciting orange in our sky. We also want to save room for our desert. I'm going all the way off the edge, off the edge, off the edge, off the edge, off the edge. All right, so now I want my sky to change to orange. If I put orange, wet orange paint right on top of that wet blue paint, what am I going to get, Kelly? Brown. Brown. All right, you're right. I'm going to get brown. I don't want a brown sky. We're not doing a nuclear fallout painting today. That'd be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. Maybe we'll do it in the future. Today, we'll just do a, a nice desert scene before the fallout. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm going to wash this blue out of the brush because I don't want a brown sky. Also, I don't want to put orange directly on the brown. And I have a trick. I mean, excuse me, orange directly on the blue so I get brown. I have a trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the orange part from the blue part with white. So I'm not using too much white. I'm going halfway on the blue, halfway on the canvas. I'm just going to go back and forth here for a minute, get nice wet paint on here for me to start my orange. I want the orange to go right up to the blue, but I don't want it to overlap. This little buffer of white is gonna help. 
I could put a little bit of white in there for the clouds. I hold the brush sideways to get a skinny stroke there for some clouds. Anyway, so I'm going to wash all this white and blue off the brush. I squish it. Squish, 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 squish. Then I take my towel and I pull the water out. Because remember, we want a dry brush to get full blast colors. All right. And now, right on top of my wet white paint, I'm going to start putting orange. I don't want to get too close to that blue because it's going to turn brown. And get there, get, get, go, go, go a little bit higher. Oh, I got, it's turned brown, it's turned brown. Oh, it's turned brown. Don't laugh. You don't have to. Okay, I can fix it. I got a little bit of brown, I can fix it. Wash out that orange. Go back with a little bit of white. And there, now we got a good transition. All right. Try not to bring the blue down into the orange. All right, wash the brush. Let's go back to that orange. And what we're doing is we're creating kind of a sunset. The sky up here is dark and the sun's way down here and bright, sending all these colors into the clouds and the sun's bouncing off the clouds, making this nice orange. Uh, let's bring the orange down a little bit more. And then we'll switch to yellow. Sound good? Sound good to you, Kelly? Oh, what do you think? Yes. Is it looking all right? Can you start to feel like you're in the desert yet? Probably not yet. I we, feel the heatness. We could decide to put a beach. In, no, let's keep it a desert. All right. So let's start transitioning to yellow. Now, I don't even have to wash my brush this time because it's orange going to yellow. It's not going to turn brown on me. And... There we go. The only thing is, I, I want to make sure that when I stick my dirty orange brush into the yellow, I don't pollute all my yellow paint and start making it all orangish. So just take from the side of it and leave some, because we're going to need some of that pure yellow in a bit. All right. So let's go down, say maybe a little bit more than halfway down. The, halfway down the canvas is about right here. We can go a little bit further. So, in a minute, I'm going to put my sun right on top of this yellow, and it's going to look nice. I'm going to make my sun with white, and you won't be able to see it really clearly, but it'll look like a super bright spot in our sunset. I can bring some of this yellow into the orange. It's, I'll tell you what. Let's turn the brush sideways to get the skinny line and put a couple little yellow streaks in there. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. That looks nice. Ooh, some orange in the yellow, some yellow in the orange. I, I don't want it all the same color. There we go. That's looking cool. All right. So now we're ready to put the sun in. I got a trick with the sun because... I don't know if you've ever tried to paint a circle for a sun and it ends up way too big. Um, the trick is to paint it a lot smaller than you want it and then it accidentally ends up just right. So I'm going to get a little bit of white. I'm just going to use the corner of the brush here. That way I can get Real small. I'm going to make sure I don't have any little hairs hanging off here. There we go. And let's see. Where should I put it, Kelly? Hmm. Left, right, that, 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 that. Tell me when to stop. Stop. All right, right there. Okay. So I'm going to start out real small. And it's not a good circle yet. Oh, I got to keep going. Oh, it's starting to get to be a circle. Oh. Uh, Yes, and as soon as I get a circle, I'm going to stop. Because that's big enough. I don't want it to get way too big. So my trick worked. Okay. So, I think the sun's big enough? I think it's big enough. Okay. So, wash and dry my brush. Now, 
what do you what color do you usually think of when you think of sand, Kelly? It's like, like a tannish color. Tannish color? Like, I think of white because that's we have yellowish, but not too much yellow. Like yeah, I think of white because of Florida beaches, you know. But this is desert. Anyway, you're right, it's more got tan and some browns. It can be orange, especially when the sun's shining on it. Uh, I like that one too, one pretzel. You're, you're, Kelly's down to one pretzel. If anybody has any pretzels, uh, you can send them delivery to 304 St. John's Avenue. Kelly needs pretzels. All right, can we start the painting again, Kelly? Okay. All right, um, thank you. All right. So we're going to make... We want a little brownish, tannish, orangish type uh, sand. I don't have any brown. All I have is orange, blue, yellow, red, black, white. I can get it to go brownish. I'm going to start with orange. And just like in the sky, if I were to have mixed orange with the blue, I would have ended up with brownish type colors, really muddy colors. So I'm going to try that here. I'll start with some orange. Make a horizon line. I got my brush skinny here just to, to get a skinny stroke, just to make this horizon line. I'm gonna put a little bit of hills, a little bit up and down, not too drastic, because I want my butte to stand out. <laughs> that one's funny. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we want the butte to be uh, more prominent than the hills. Anyway, that's good. I'm just gonna start out that way. Now, things in the distance have more or less, uh, more or less color. What do you think, Kelly? I think it's like on less because we can see it smaller. Yeah, because yeah. it's further away. It's atmospheric perspective. And what that means is there's air, little particles in the air between us and things further away. There's more particles the further away. So you don't see the colors as much. White removes color. Black removes color, but we don't want to paint black. We're going to put white in there, and it's going to remove some of that bright orange. See that? Amazing. Yes. Ma amazing. Because white is, you can think of it as the absence of color. Uh, I'd rather think of white as anti-color rather than a color. Like you got red, blue, uh, yellow. Those are colors. White is not color. So when you put white in a color or black, it removes the color. You make a shade or a tone. There we go. Now, it's a little orange. We wanted to get a little bit of that tannish brown. I'm going to get a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of blue. If I get too much, it's going to look kind of weird. We don't want a blue desert. And you'll see as I add this in, at first it looks blue. If I keep on blending, oh, I'm getting some, ooh, getting some nice tan, some muddy browns. Again, I don't want it all one color. I want it to keep changing. Ooh, I like that. I really like that. Do you like that, Kelly? Yes, it looks really nice. <laughs> all right. So, what? I was saying I like the color. It more looks like a sandy color. Yeah. Like a desert. Yeah. Oh, you see that little brown stroke? I go, ooh, tan. Okay, so as it's getting closer to us, we're going to see more color because there's less of that atmospheric perspective. We're not looking through as much air. So you can think of the bottom of the painting as getting closer to us. And then the horizon line getting further away. You also think the same way opposite on the top. It gets further away. Or excuse me. It gets closer towards the top, further away towards the bottom. I just got to figure it out. There we go. Fixed it. Okay. So I'm going to start adding more color. I'm getting things thrown at me by my producer. Do you guys have this problem getting things thrown at you by your producer? It's okay. It didn't hurt. All right, so let's start with a little orange. 
and that, ooh, that's too much color, but I will be all right. We always, we know we can add a little bit of white to take the color away. Let's do that. Add a little bit more white, take that color away, and we slowly want to get more color as it comes towards us. There we go. And let's, let's go wild. Let's go really wild. Red is a lot of color. I'm going to put some red. Notice I haven't even washed my brush because I'm, I'm wanting these things to blend. In a minute, I'll need to wash the brush. But uh, So orange blends into the red. Oh, yeah. Now I have to lift up my canvas. If you're working on an easel, you notice you have a lip right at the bottom. Sometimes you have to lift up the canvas to get to the very bottom, but then you can put it back in so it's nice and stable. Let's see, let's do some more orange. Because remember, we don't want one solid chunk of color. We want it to always be changing. You can even go up in here a little bit. In here. Mm, yeah, I like that. Nice, nice little desert scene we're making here. We got to get this canvas filled up. We're almost there. Tell you what, I'm gonna add a little bit of white because it is kind of bright. A spot down there. Oh, thank you. You mean the spot that's white? Yeah. I'm gonna paint the white spot with white paint, and it's gonna drag some of that red into it. And it's going to be just fine. Even if it gets a little pink or whatever, it's all going to equal out and look nice. There we go. I'm doing little swerves as I do this. Sometimes I use the skinny stroke. Sometimes I use the wide stroke. Sometimes I put a little shape in with the skinny stroke, but mostly the wide stroke. So what's the right to the wide stroke? The wide stroke is the paintbrush held like this rather than the skinny stroke is the paintbrush held like that. Right? Yeah. All right. So I think we're about ready to put our butte in our painting. And I'm going to do it on the left hand side. And let's see. I'll tell you what, Kelly, you tell me. How, where should the bottom of our butte be? Tell me when to stop. Right there. Like right there? There? Okay. Right there. Kelly says right there. I, I'll take that. I'm going to wash the brush. Now, we want our butte. It's kind of almost the same color as our desert sand, but if we make it the exact same color, we won't be able to see it. Um, I'm going to start with red, and then I'm going to add some shading to it, and <clears throat> it's really going to make it stand out. So let's start by getting a little red on the tip of our brush. Not too much for this. Basically, right now, we're drawing with our paintbrush. So we want to use a skinny stroke. Uh, to make sure we don't want our line too fat. So if we're going up and down like this, we hold our brush like this. If we're going side to side, we hold it like this, it's going to stay skinny. So the way they're shaped, I shouldn't have erased it, huh? Anyway, they have a flat top. And they kind of calm down. And then they get a little bit wider at the bottom. They're all shaped different. So, did I get that right, Kelly, about the right spot? I want it to yeah, stick out the right camera. Spot. All right. Look, it can change. We can change the shape. It doesn't have to be exact. You can add a little extra bump in there. Anyway, let's go ahead and fill that in with red. You know what? Also, let's give it a round bottom. We'll just, well, you're going to use the skinny stroke to get a skinny line. So give it a curve. Yeah, and get a bit of curve, just like that. Yeah, so that's a butte shape. What does it remind you of? A coffee cup. Coffee cup? Like a little teacup. 
that's upside down or something? Yeah. I can see that. It might remind, remind, remind you of something totally different. But anyway, I see that. Maybe a funnel. It's kind of like a funnel yeah. with some lumpy parts. But it's not the same on the right as the left. It changes because who knows how it got you know, washed away different. It is very flat on the top, usually. Every once in a while, you might see an old tree growing out of the top. We're not going to put a tree growing out of the top of ours. So I'm going to fill it in with this red. And then when I put my black shading on, it's going to mix with the red and kind of look really earthy. So, <clears throat> earthy, tone. earthy tone, yes. We want uh, to wash and dry our brush now. Now, black takes over very easily. So, let me show you how I'm going to get a little tiny bit of black. I'm just going to use the very tip of the brush, and then I'm going to rub it on my palette and take most of that that I just put on off. So that gives me a nice sharp edge and just a little bit of paint. And so let me put some shading around the side of this butte. Let me just start by putting the lines in first. Let's put some on this side. So yeah, I'm yeah, and some on this side. Starting to look a little earthy? Yes. Right now, I don't see it. Yeah, it's a little down. Are you drawing a butte over there? No. No. What are you drawing? I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, she's drawing a, um, she's drawing a polar bear. A, a a snowstorm. A polar bear, a snowstorm. A view from inside of a cloud. Anyway, let's go back to our butte. We're shading the edges. We don't want to turn this whole thing black. We just want it darker on the edges. You notice how you can turn your brush to get skinnier and thicker lines. Sometimes I want it skinny, sometimes I want it thick. You can all diagonal to get it kind of skinny and kind of thick. There we go. I'm going to add, I like that. I need to, I need to fill in my shading a little bit. It needs to go all the way to the edge. But I think I'm going to add a little bit of orange in there too. That's going to give it a little bit more earthiness. So how does it make it more a little earthiness? Well, because this black, you might think of it as actually a really, really dark green. And when you add the orange to it, green and orange make brown. So earthy is brown, I think. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. All right. There. And plus, we don't want it all the same color anyway. So it just helps us to make the color different. I'm leaving some of that red, just putting some Spots of orange in there. And now we need a little shadow beneath this butte. Our sun is right here, and our butte is here. So the sun's shining here. How can the sun be shining on the sand here if the butte is blocking it? It's going to create a shadow. <laughs> We hope that you like the painting. I hope you like the painting. I hope this is fun because this is super fun for me. I love painting deserts. I like painting anything uh, except for houses. Oh, I like using lots of different colors anyway. So let's put start our shadow out at the bottom of this butte. Now our sun is here. Light's coming this way. So the light's being blocked right in this area. And I'm going to use just very little bit of black. Remember how to get just a little bit of black is you wipe 
you get it on and then you wipe it off and then it's gonna kind of go in this direction there we go and I'm gonna spread that thin because there is some light getting to it it's bouncing off things and uh, so anyway the, huh. um, what is it called again butte the butte so the sun is hitting the butte uh-huh um, Probably. I would think. It really depends what type of material it's made out of. But since it's, it's probably rock, that's the reason why it didn't erode away. The rest of the ground eroded away. It was just sand. But this was a rock underneath the sand. And so, yeah, probably have a highlight. Um, I think, think we can go ahead and put that highlight in. And... I think we'll use white for that because the sun is really hitting it strong right there. It's going to be a really bright highlight on that really hard rock. You know how really hard things reflect light? So that's where the highlights come from is reflection of light. Uh, so very skinny line, very little bit of white, and just barely add just a little little bit of white. You don't want to blend this in. We want it to stay white. We'll put it on all these little edges. Let me go back and put just a tiny bit more. There we go. Maybe along that one, along that edge, along that edge. I'm just using the corners of the brush here. We figured out. The brush is, you got to think of it as just a tool to transfer the paint to the canvas. You have to use it. You have to use your hand with the brush to get it to go on just how you want it. The more you paint, the more you'll be able to figure out how to do that. All right. So now we have our butte with a highlight and a shadow, and we need a cactus. Ooh, a cactus. Yes. Cowboy hat? All right. She's trying to talk me into doing that cactus is a cowboy hat, but I'm just going to do a regular, I'm gonna, a regular cactus. What is a regular? There's all sorts of different cactuses. I'm going to do that old cowboy cactus that we like see. The old classic one. Yeah, the classic cactus. So, oh, it's, it's dangerous in here. It's not really. I'm just, when your producer throws little pieces of paper at you, it is dangerous. Okay. I forgot to put. <clears throat> green and on my palette but guess what I have yellow and blue and yellow and blue will make what green. Kelly green. Green. green yes not purple not orange Wait. what makes purple no it can make purple what makes it purple what makes purple red and blue okay what makes orange yellow and you're right, red. All right, so blue and yellow make green. <laughs> All right, that's called cranial flatulence. Okay, so excuse that. That's just a little joke. All right, we're going to take a clump of yellow, a clump of blue. The more blue I add, it's going to be a darker green. The more yellow I add, it's going to be a lighter green. I don't want it all to be the same. I want different colors of green. So I'm not going to blend it like I would a uh, uh, muffin mixture. I'm not going to blend it like, you know, cream of tomato soup. I'm just going to barely kind of like just get some green on it. So I still have a little bit of blue and yellow and um, different shades of green. I can make it really dark. By adding some of that black, which we discovered earlier, is just really, really, really dark green. So I'm making Kelly hungry by mentioning muffin mix. Muffin, muffin, okay, stop. Now you're making me hungry. Are you guys hungry? Please do not. This is not edible, by the way. Okay, so there is edible our cactus, 
please do not tell the kids that. There's not edible paint. All right. No such thing. All right. We are going to put... <laughs> We're going to put our cactus in, but we don't want it. We want to add dynamics to it. We don't want everything along the same plane. So if I put my cactus right along the same spot as the butte, it's going to it's going to be kind of boring. So let's put the cactus closer. I'm going to start by holding my brush to get the skinny stroke. My hand shakes. Sometimes I can steady it like this. Sometimes I can put my pinky against here. Or sometimes, once I touch the canvas, it quits shaking. Anyway, go straight up. Ooh, and I got a nice dark green cactus. The start of one, anyway. The top, I want it a little bit rounded. There we go. We're using, we're doing this all with one brush. Isn't that cool? You could use multiple brushes, different sizes, if it helps you out, if you have them. I like, it with, I like to try to do it with one brush. All right, I'm going to wash that off. And... And what? Well, <clears throat> I'm going to wash it off and make sure my, my bristles are nice and smooth again. Because I'm going to put these arms on the cactus now. And I don't want little hairs coming off to actually make extra green marks. So let's get some more green. We want different, you know, some yellow, some dark green, some light green. Let's put one arm right here. A good spot? I think so. Okay. There we go. Ooh, I like it. Let's see if we can match those colors up a little bit. I'm just going to put a little bit more. There we go. All right. Brush is still pretty good shape. I think I can put another arm on it. You know, you can make a cactus just like that, but I, I've seen them like that. Sometimes they don't even have any arms. If I were to put another arm right here at the same spot, it's going to look like some little green dude doing this. But <clears throat> it's going to, you know, like some little green dude holding up his hands. Uh, so I'm going to move it up a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, this second one. There we go. Perfect. You're supposed to agree, Kelly. Oh. Is it perfect? Should I agree? Yes. It's okay, perfect. it is perfect. All right. It won't be perfect if there's a cowboy hat. Oh, okay. Yes. Cowboy hat. Cowboy hat. All right. Wash the brush because uh, we're going to put a little highlight on our cactus. So our sun's over here. Maybe the highlight is shining right here on the side of this cactus. Since it's a green cactus, I put a white highlight on my rock. Green cactus, we can use a yellow highlight because I like to think of uh, yellow as the way the light hitting green uh, makes it turn yellow. Kind of like if you look at the trees and the leaves, you see little yellow spots. If you look at the light hitting grass, you see some yellow. So let's just put a little yellow highlight right there, right there, right there. We don't want too much, just a little bit. That's fine. I like that. All right. So, sweet and simple. We need, this is a, I really like our desert here. It's starting to look really good. What do you think, Kelly? <laughs> okay. What do you think might help it? We need something else. Maybe some little scrubby bushes. Have you ever seen like out west the little scrubby bushes? Uh, tell you what, I'm gonna make my brush. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it. Uh, I it up. Yeah, it up. ruffle it up. Yeah, I want a bunch of little different tips, and. I'm going to get some different color green, some dark green, some light green. Let's put a little yellow in there. Let's put a little bit of that black in there. And you see how it's uh, all, huh? Yeah, it's, there's a bunch of different spots. Anyway, then all I have to do is 
hold my brush like this and jab at the canvas and just make some little bushes. Now bushes that are closer to us up here. What, Kelly? Oh, I'm bigger. Yes. They're not really bigger. They just appear bigger because they're closer to us. So let's start with a big bush. Right in the front. Uh, yes, a happy bush. Happy little bush. What's his name? Mm. George Bush? Okay, and George Bush. George Bush. All right, let's put let's put Billy Bush right here. Right. It's a little bit further back. So it'll be a little bit smaller. Yeah, you got it. Of course. Billy Boy, uh, Billy Bush, George Bush, and let's put Barbara Bush back here. Barbara. Uh, Barbara Bush. Is way back here. So if I'm going to put a bush way back here, Kelly, it's going to be. All right. What about Laura Bush? Let's put a Laura Bush. Right here. So that's kind of like in between these two sizes, I should make it, huh? But it's, it's definitely not the same shape. It might have a stick that goes off to the side. There. I got all kinds of things in my landscape now. I could put more bushes, less bushes. You can put bushes wherever you want. It's your desert. It's your happy little desert. And you can put a bush in your happy little desert wherever you want. I'm going to leave mine like that. So what doesn't make sense? I have a shadow on the butte right here or the butte is creating a shadow. So what else needs to create a shadow, you think, The huh? cactus. The cactus. And the bushes. Yeah, that makes sense, right? How, how could that have a shadow and this not have a shadow? So the sun is here. It's Let's make the shadow go the same direction as, uh, as on the butte. Then it, it kind of makes sense, right? All right. So the sun is low in the sky. I don't know if you ever noticed when you're, out walking in the evening, how your shadow gets really long, but it, uh, it's because the sun's low in the sky and it makes shadows longer. I'm not using very much black here, just a little bit, and it's going to go all the way off the painting. You know what? This shadow is so long, this shadow goes all the way to here, but I ran out of canvas. so. The arms aren't even going to show up in this shadow because they're way down here. So let's put some bush shadows. Some bushy shadows? Yeah. We'll do it the same way. I'm going to put them in the same direction as all the rest of the shadow. We'll go this way. This way. Bushy. Yeah. And I think we have an awesome. You know what? I'm just going to darken my butte shadow. The shadow might be a little bit darker closer to the object. And then as it gets further away from the object, it kind of gets less and less dark. So we want to slowly use less pressure with our brush so we don't get as much paint on and it's not as dark. And there is our beautiful desert butte scene. What do you think? All right. Well, cool. I hope you had fun. I hope somebody followed along with it. Or you could paint it later. Or you could just use it to inspire you to create your own desert. Um, In your own way. But for now, I'm going to put my signature on it. I'm just going to put my initials, L-T. You can sign your name. You can use a marker. You can put your whole name. You can just put your initials. I'm going to put it with white right in the shadow. Bam. Bam. I don't want it too big. I want it to be seen. Um, anyway, so the painting's done. Uh, if you guys want to buy it, it's $18,000 and 72 cents. Can it be 10 cents? 10 cents? Okay. I will sell it to you for 10 cents. 
Ah, guess what? She doesn't get it for 10 cents then. Price just went up too. Now it's $25,000 and 62 cents. I'm sorry, people. Uh, anyway, I want to see your pictures of your paintings. Um, and if you paint it along, or if you do it in the future, please post it to us if you want feedback, or if you just want us to see it, or if you want to critique, please let us know. And that will conclude our first test live broadcast. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And we hope you guys enjoy it. And Kelly hopes you enjoy it. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.